Today's lesson is on bisectors in triangles. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. Okay, I hope you have your pencil and paper ready because we're about to hit the vocabulary words really hard. When three or more lines intersect at one point, they are concurrent. The point at which they intersect is called the point of concurrency. For any triangle, certain sets of lines are always concurrent. Two of these sets of lines are the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle's three sides and the bisectors of the triangle's three angles. Let's take a look at the concurrency of perpendicular bisectors theorem. The perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle are concurrent at a point equidistant from the vertices. So if you take a look, segment XP, segment YP, and segment ZP are the perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of the triangle. Notice segment PX is perpendicular to segment AB, meaning they form a right angle, and it bisects segment AB into two congruent segments, segment XB and segment XA. Since all three of these segments are perpendicular bisectors, they are equidistant from each vertex. So point P is the same distance away from angle B, or point B, as point P is from angle A, or point A, as point P is from angle C, or point C. The point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle is called the circumcenter of the triangle. So here, point P is the circumcenter of triangle ABC. Since the circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices, you can use the circumcenter as the center of the circle that contains each vertex of the triangle. You can say that the circle is circumscribed about the triangle. The circumcenter of a triangle can be inside, on, or outside of the triangle. If you notice, in an acute triangle, the circumcenter is inside the triangle. In a right triangle, the circumcenter is on the hypotenuse of the triangle. And in an obtuse triangle, the circumcenter is outside of the triangle. In example one, we will find the circumcenter of a triangle. What are the coordinates of the circumcenter of a triangle with vertices at P, 0, 6, O at 0, 0, and S at 4, 0? Now that we've plotted our three points, let's connect them to make our triangle. Since the circumcenter is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, let's start by taking the perpendicular bisector of side OS and side OP. Since side OS is horizontal, we know a segment perpendicular to it would be vertical. Since we want the perpendicular bisector to bisect segment OS, we want to go, since it's four units long, we want to go two units from each endpoint through the line x equals 2. Since segment PO is vertical, we can find the line that is horizontal and that will be perpendicular. Since segment OS is 6 units long, we know that to bisect it, we need to be 3 units from each endpoint, which would be the line y equals 3. Since all three perpendicular bisectors of a segment are concurrent, meaning they intersect at the same point, we really don't need to find the perpendicular bisector of segment PS. It will be concurrent at this point as well. Since this is the point where the two perpendicular bisectors intersect, we know that the ordered pair 2, 3 is going to be our coordinates for our circumcenter of this triangle. What are the coordinates of the circumcenter of a triangle with vertices A at 2, 7, B at 10, 7, and C at 10, 3? Let's start by connecting the points to create our triangle. Since segment AB is a horizontal line, we know the perpendicular bisector will be vertical through the midpoint of that segment. Since segment AB is 8 units long, we want to be 4 units from each endpoint which will be the line x equals 6. Since segment BC is vertical, the perpendicular bisector will be horizontal through the midpoint of segment BC, which would be the line y equals 5. Since the circumcenter of a triangle is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors 
this point is our circumcenter. It is at 6, 5. So our ordered pair of our circumcenter is 6, 5. In example 2, we will use a circumcenter. A town planner wants to locate a new fire station equidistant from the elementary school, middle school, and high schools. Where should he locate the fire station? Let's start by connecting the three points of the schools to form a triangle. Since we know the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle, we can find our perpendicular bisectors and where they intersect, we will have our circumcenter. The perpendicular bisector of segment EH is about here. The perpendicular bisector of segment HM is about here. And the perpendicular bisector of segment EM is about here. Since this is the point of concurrency, or the circumcenter, of our triangle, we know that this is a perfect place for the new fire station. It will be equidistant to the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school. Pause the video and do you try number two. The town planner wants to place a bench equidistant from the three trees in the park. Where should he place the bench? Let's start by connecting the three trees to form a triangle. Since we know that the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the three vertices, we want to find the circumcenter by creating the perpendicular bisector of each side. Let's first take the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Now let's draw in the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. And finally, let's put in the perpendicular bisector of segment BC. The point of concurrency, or the circumcenter, of these of the triangle is the place where the park bench should go. This would be equidistant between the three trees. All right, here we go with more vocabulary. Let's take a look at the concurrency of angle bisectors theorem. The theorem says that the bisectors of the angles of a triangle are concurrent at a point equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So if you notice, segment BP is the bisector of angle XBY. So where that segment meets with segment AP and segment CP, the other angle bisectors, this point P is your point of concurrency of the angle bisectors called the end center. For any triangle, the end center is always going to be inside that triangle. If you look at this diagram, point X, point Y, and point Z are all equidistant from point P, the end center. Point P is the center of a circle that is inscribed in the triangle. If you notice, these distances are all congruent. They are equal length. In example three, we will identify and use the end center of a triangle. They tell us that the length of segment GE is 2x minus 7, and the length of segment GF is x plus 4. We want to find the length of segment GD. Since point G is the end center, or the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors, we know that point G is equidistant from the three sides of the triangle. So I know that the length of segment GE is equal to the length of segment GF. Since the length of segment GE is 2x minus 7 and the length of segment GF is x plus 4, let's substitute into our equation. Let's use the subtraction property of equality to subtract x from both sides and the addition property of equality to add 7 to both sides. We are now left with x equals 11. Since we're looking for the length of segment GD, which would be equal to the length of segment GE and segment GF, we can substitute 11 in for the value of x into either expression. So the length of segment GD will be equal to the length of segment GF, which is x plus 4, or 11 plus 4. So all three of these segments, GF, GE, and GD, will have the measure, or the length, of 15 units. Pause the video and do you try number three. The length of segment QN is 5x plus 36, and the length of segment QM is 2x plus 51. What is the length of segment QO? 
Since point Q is our end center, we know that the distance between the end center and the sides of the triangle are congruent. So let's start by setting 5x plus 36 equal to 2x plus 51. Let's use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 2x from both sides and the subtraction property of equality to subtract 36 from both sides. So we are left with 3x equal to 15. Use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 3 and x will equal 5. Now we just need to substitute 5 into either of these expressions. Since the length of segment QM is 2x plus 51, it will equal 2 times 5 plus 51, or 10 plus 51, which is 61. So the length of segment QM, QN, and QO are all going to be 61 units. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Make sure you check your answers on the next slides. Here are your answers to questions 1 through 3. And here are the answers for questions 4 through 6. If you don't understand something, please make sure you ask me in class. Now give the challenge a shot. All right, now that we're at the end of the lesson, take another minute to reread the learning goal and the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since we started the lesson.